In this lesson, we're going to talk about mediums. Now, if you're new to oil painting, the term mediums doesn't mean a lot to you. Uh, or if you've come from a different type of genre of painting, like watercolours or acrylics, then the word mediums means a whole lot different to, uh, to you as, to, as, as it were to, uh, to oil painting. Oil painting mediums are different again. And what are mediums? Well, basically what is meant by mediums is the, um, the additional additives you add in to the oil paints in order to help them to flow better or dry quicker or whatever you want. Um, and so those, that's what mediums are. Um, and oil paints straight out of the tube, you see, they are quite thick. And if I just put a little bit of this blue onto the palette, you can see how thick the oil paint is. Um, it's really quite, really is quite thick. Now, if you were going to paint impasto um, technique, which is quite thick um, painting, uh, where you see layers of paint, uh, of paint on the canvas and it's just raised up and the textural type of painting, then you could quite easily go ahead and use the paint, the paint straight out of the tube. But if you wanted to do blending, which is what oil paints are really quite well known for, and what the old masters were doing is uh, when they were when they were uh, painting with oils, blending one colour into another, and you're getting these um, lovely tone tonal values on faces and and, and folds of fabric, etc. Then you need to be able to thin the paint down. And that's where the mediums come in. Now, there obviously there are different types, and if you go into an art shop, you'll see there's a whole array of different bottles with exotic sounding names such as Sansador or Liquin or Poppy Oil. And you'll be wondering what on earth they are and why do I need them, do I need them, and how many of them should I be buying, and what do they do? So the lesson today is to explain a little bit about that um, and to, uh, so you look at understanding of, 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 uh, of the types of mediums out there and which ones you basically need to, to get you going. Um, so paints themselves are made up of pigment plus linseed oil. Um, so unlike acrylics or watercolours where you, if you want to dilute a paint and reduce its viscosity, then you would think in with, with acrylics or, or with, with uh, watercolours, you'd think, okay, well, I'll, I'll add some water perhaps because it's a water-based uh, paint. Um, but it's not the case with oils. Oils obviously have oil in them, not water in them. So you can't add water to oil paints to, uh, to thin it down. Uh, you need to add oil. And so being that, that they are mixed up of, of uh, pigment plus linseed oil, you'd think, okay, well, I need to add more linseed oil to them. Yes, you do, but there is a little proviso there. There's a little um, word of warning there because what you're doing is slowing down the drying time of the oils. Oils pails take a long time to dry. Um, and if you're, th for example, if you're thinking of varnishing a, a, a painting, then you need to make to let it wait for 12 months before you you uh, you think of varnishing it, because it will take that length of time to dry. Uh, depending on how much paint you use, obviously, but you don't want to run the risk of it um, uh, that the outer layers appearing to be dry, the inner layers are still wet. If you paint um, a, uh, a varnish on top, then you run the risk of that that as the lower layers dry completely, they'll start to crack. The upper layers will start to crack and the varnish will start to crack because it's lost that flexibility of you, of you allowing it to, to dry naturally. So don't um, varnish a painting until it's been left to dry for at least 12 months. Um, so how much of each and which ones do you use? So there's different types of linseed oil. Uh, you've got um, the straightforward linseed oil, which from an art shop, this, this is different to linseed oil that you would perhaps use to, um, 
to treat wood with, for example. It's more refined than that. Not, the, the more the particles have been taken out, it's so much smoother blended um, uh, 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 of uh, oil than the than the, the linseed oil in your DIY stores. So the linseed oil that you would get from an art shop would be something like that, and you can see the colour of it. Now the downside of adding linseed oil, if you were painting with um, uh, a lot of pastel colours and whites, is that over time that linseed oil can yellow, uh, and so it can discolour your your uh, your your pale colours, your whites. So you don't want really, um, if you don't want that to happen, if you're not bothered about it, great, you perhaps won't even notice it. But if you don't want that to happen and you're very sensitive about making sure that your, your bright colours stay bright and your white stay white, then you need to think about using a different type of linseed oil. So you can get a clarified linseed oil, which as you can see from the difference in colour there, you can see from one to the other that that is going to yellow less. Then you can also get a refined linseed oil, uh, and this one here, you can see the difference there, um, and that one's hardly going to discolour at all, so that one would be a better one for you. There are different make makes on the market, and they all kind of do the same thing uh, with regards to the oil, but there is uh, the difference there being that one will yellow less than another one. If you, um, if you do particularly want to to make sure that your colours don't yellow, then you need to be looking at a different type of oil. Um, poppy oil, for example, you can use poppy oil. Uh, that doesn't yellow at all. There's also walnut oil that doesn't yellow, but um, you uh, that that one you need to have a bigger budget for because that one is much more expensive than the standard linseed oil. Uh, so um, I would stick to the the linseed oils. Uh, just get yourself um, a paler version uh, so that it's uh, it's not it's it's less inclined to yellow. Now, apart from just the linseed oil, you need to be the, and adding um, something else to it because you can imagine if you're adding just linseed oil to the paints, you're going to um, you're making them much more oily, and that oil dies by, di dries by oxidization rather than evaporation. So you're you're slowing down the drying time. So you need to counteract that somehow. And you do that by also adding into the, your, your mix, you're adding in a, a rectified turpentine or a low odour spirit such as Sansador. Um, there are other manufacturers that do a low odour version. Um, rectified turpentine, turpentine is fine, uh, but it does smell. Uh, and so if you're sensitive to that at all or you're going to be painting in an area where there's perhaps less ventilation and um, you need to be thinking about that so the, to, the Sansador doesn't smell at all um, so you can use that in place of the, the rectifying turpentine. Keep your white spirit for just cleaning your brushes because white spirit's a little bit harsher so you don't want to uh, um, to be adding that to your paints. I'll do another lesson on brush care um, and so you can see that other video and we'll talk about how to look after your brushes and how to clean your brushes etc after that. So you've got these two. Um, so I'll come on to what the others are for the moment. I'm just going to talk about these for the second just, just, to, just to say how much of each should you add to your paint. Right, for example, I've got some, I'll use some red here. Um, I'll just put that on my palette and you can see, once again, you can see how thick the original oil paint is. This one is cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow, cadmium red. <laughs> uh, and so you can see how quite how thick that is. Now I've decanted some of the uh, linseed oil and the spirit into little pots. It's a very handy thing to have on your, um, your next to your easel rather than having the big bottles around you. Just put a little bit of the linseed oil in just an old little jam jar cleaned out and same in, the, um, in another pot for your sansador or your low odour spirit. I'm just going to show you then how much of each you need to add. Right, so take your palette knife. I'll do another lesson on palette knives as well. Um, and you're going to dip your end of your palette knife in the linseed oil. So you can see you've just got a little droplet on the end of your palette knife. 
So I'm just going to drop that next to my paint. But the balance is, you see how much um, of the, the uh, spirit I'm putting on. You see my palette knife there is completely covered in the um, spirit, in the sansador. That's the balance of the two. So it's much more of the sansador or the turpentine than it is of the linseed oil. Much, much more. And the reason for that is that when you're painting um, fat over lean is what they call it. So you're painting in layers so your, uh, your under layers are what they call term as lean paint, whereas it's got a much more of the, the um, drying agent in it, which in this case would be the Sansador. Um, it's, we've, we've kept the butteriness of it by adding the linseed oil, but we've increased the drying time by adding in the, uh, the spirit. So, and that's giving you, and you can see it there, it's a much softer, smoother um, paint that you can, that you can use then to, uh, to do your blends. It's a much better, much easier paint to, to, uh, to work with. So that's, your, uh, that's the mix that you'd need to use. And if you stick to that, for your lower layers, much more spirit than linseed oil. And then as you go, you, you build your layers up, well, as you, you do your painting, you, go, you, go, uh, um, you, you paint one layer on top of another, then you can gradually add, um, add less um, of, the, uh, of the spirit, um, and your top layers could even be the or paint straight from the tube if you wanted to, because uh, um, that paint is going to, to, to dry um, the, the paint underneath is going to dry uh, faster because it's got a lot more of the white spirit into the the, um, the spirit into it, the uh, sansador or the rectified turpentine. So that's the, um, the the consistency that you need to go for. Much more spirit than linseed oil. Now I'm just going to clean my brush, my uh, palette knife, and I'm just going to show you the other mediums that we've got here. So we've got, um, let's see, we've talked already about the poppy oil, so I'll put that one over there. We've also got then um, alkyd flow medium. Now alkyd flow medium is uh, a very fast drying additive. Um, there are paints that you can get called alkyd paints, and I'll talk about those in a separate lesson. Uh, uh, in fact, I'll talk all about paints in another lesson. Um, but this one you can add to ordinary oil paints and it will really speed up the drying time of your... Uh, you can use it in place of linseed oil. You can, it, it is quite thick, as you can see there, it's quite thick. Um, that then you can use uh, in, in place of the, the, the spirit and the, uh, the, the linseed oil. Um, just add that to your paints and you'll find that it, it, um, it, it's, you don't get quite the butteriness or, or the smoothness that you get by using the linseed oil and the, uh, and this, the sansador. Um, but, so it's thicker to use, uh, but it does have the benefit of drying much, much faster. And so this will, will speed up, it's, it's, it's made of um, acid and alcohol. And so uh, it will speed up the drying time very quickly. So in just in a couple of days, you'll find your paint, uh, your painting is dry. Um, linseed stand oil is another one. And the stand oil, uh, what that does is um, it, it smooths out the brush strokes. So if you didn't want to see brush strokes in your painting, say you were doing something like photorealism and you've got these smooth blends and you want it to look photo genic, photographic, um, then you perhaps use stand oil to add into your paints because that flattens everything out on the canvas and it just smooths out any, any, uh, any brush strokes. So that's what that is, one is used for and it does speed up the, the drying time again as well. Um, you've got also uh, liquid. Uh, I'll, just, I'll show you liquid in a second. 
Um, the other things we've got here are retouching varnish and glazing mediums. Retouching varnish, you can use that if you're, um, say you're doing a, a, an exhibition of your paintings and you'll get, you will get there, believe me. Um, when you're doing an exhibition of your paintings, uh, then you've got, perhaps you've got some that have been left um, in a cupboard or somewhere and the colours have gone a little bit dull. You can use that to uh, temporarily just lift the colours of the, of the painting, you can use that. It's not a, it's not a, a permanent varnish, uh, but it, do, it does help for just lifting up the, the colours of, uh, of, um, of, of varnish to, uh, to, uh, to make it look um, brighter. So that's that one. You can also buy, this is um, painting medium, quick drying painting medium, which is already mixed up for you. So that's linseed oil and spirit already mixed up for you. So you don't have to worry too much about the balance between the two. You can just add something like that and that's, um, that's uh, um, you can add that to your paint and you can, you can um, uh, uh, um, reduce down the viscosity of your paint with something like that. It's more expensive, of course, these are a lot cheaper, so, but that is a route that you can use too. So um, for myself, I stick to the linseed oil and the, uh, the, um, the spirit, and I find that's fine for, uh, for general purpose painting. Right, going back to the liquin. Liquin is, um, it, it speeds the drying again. Uh, but it's also very good for um, for a glaze, a transparent glaze. Uh, say you wanted to paint um, gauze, or so you could see that transparency through uh, your paints. You want to see the subject behind the gauze. Then liquid is fantastic for that. It's also um, uh, useful for adjusting the colour of something. So if you've painted something in one colour but then you decide, I don't know, I think my, I'd like to change that a little bit. Um, so you can make up a transparent glaze that will change the colour of your original painting. I'll just show you a demonstration of that. You see on this painting here, all three balls were painted in red. Um, but when it was dry, you must do it, you have to wait till it's dry, you can't do it when it's still wet, but when it was dry, I decided then I'd quite like to have the centre ball yellow or a different colour. So I painted, I mixed up then um, a cadmium yellow in with a little bit of liquid, liquid um, and uh, I painted over the centre ball. So you can see that it's changed the colour quite significantly of that central ball. Um, it's lifted it and it's just, it's, 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 you can still see the, 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 the paint underneath but it's lifted the colour and it's changed it. So I'll just show you, I'll just show you how to do that. I'll just mix up a little bit of liquid with um, some of blue paint. And the blue I have here is um, cerulean blue. So I've got some in a jar here that I keep to one side rather than again having all of the, the big pots out need my painting. So it's, uh, it's a good idea to keep these little small jars again. So I've got some liquid there and you can see how gelatinous it is. It's quite thick. Um, so I'm just going to add a little bit of blue into that. I don't want to add too much because I want that to keep that transparency. I want to change the colour but I want to see, still see the brush stroke. And let's just see what that does. So I'm going to add it to this ball here. And you can see that you can still see the red underneath. But you're changing the colour quite a lot. 
need to work it in a little bit because you don't really want to see your brush strokes. Take a little bit off my brush. And just soften that in. But you can see the difference that that's making. And it will dry even more transparent. But you can see how that has altered the colour of that ball. See now I've got this blue glow to it. I might decide that perhaps I want to keep that a little bit more pink so I can just wipe a little bit of that back. But you can see how, um, how that lifts the colour and changes the colour of, of that ball. You see the difference? Okay. So that's your um, mediums. So you've got uh, linseed oil or poppy oil or walnut oil, which doesn't yellow, more expensive. Um, you've got your uh, spirits, which um, uh, you can use rectified turpentine or sansador, which is the low odor alternative. And then you've got these other mediums here that do a range of different things. Or you can get, as I said, you can get the ready mixed one, again a little bit more expensive, but um, that gives you the balance, the correct balance that you need for your uh, mixing into your paints. Okay, thank you.